Now, when I was a kid, one of my favorite places to come in the whole of Manchester was the Science and Industry Museum here behind me. And in particular, a very long brick building called the Power Hall. And I just remember it being full of these huge green and black machines with rotating wheels and lots of steam and clanging and banging and noise and the smell of oil and all that. And it was just fantastic. And of course, I didn't understand what those machines did, certainly not how they worked. And I probably wanted to be like a footballer or an astronaut or something like that. Certainly not whatever you call this that I'm doing now. But obviously something in that room stuck in my subconscious mind and gave me a love of machinery and industrial history and, well, history in general. And for a long, long time, the building has been closed while it's undergone some much needed renovation work. But now it is back, it's been conserved, and it's undergone this huge and exciting decarbonisation project, which has made it much more sustainable and future-proof. But it's been so long, so I'm not actually sure what the power hall is, what any of those machines actually do. Maybe it's time I learned some of them. But mostly, how do they help tell the story of Manchester? The story of industrialization in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries is at its heart a story of energy, specifically harnessing energy in one form and using it to power machinery. At first machines were small and powered by hand or foot, but when they were made much bigger and placed in mills, they needed to be powered by water wheel, meaning mills needed to be placed as close to rivers as possible. Textile manufacturing was key to this demand. But to move beyond this limitation, power needed to be harnessed from another source, steam. Well, with Manchester and energy and the Industrial Revolution, it really all started with cotton. So you had already had a thriving cotton industry in Manchester before steam engines came along. But it was the real sort of revolutionary transformation moment happened when Arkwright first thought of um, applying steam power to a cotton mill. Um, so powering the machinery using an engine powered by fossil fuels. Um, and the reason that was so transformatory is because it meant you could put a mill wherever you wanted. So you didn't have to just have it um, by the side of a stream or a river to uh, power the water wheel. You could put your mill where there was a plentiful supply of workers. So steam engines allowed industry to go where the workers were and allowed places like Manchester to grow and spread away from the riverbanks. It's an aspect of steam engines that we often don't think about how their development not only ramps up industrialization, but changed the shape and size of population centers like Manchester. Because it was like a huge transformation of people's lives as well. So workers were working in factories and cotton mills for the first time, um, moving in because there were so many jobs. Um, so it was a completely different way of living. You were sort of having to like get up really early, having to sort of toil and work at the pace of the engine so like the engine was like the beating heart of the mill and everything just ran to that rhythm um, so the, um, the, the engines were completely tireless just sort of like rhythmically working away the whole day and the workers had to keep up with that relentless pace. The textile industry might have been the catalyst for early transformation in Manchester but other industries soon followed all of which needed more and more power. But hang on a minute how did Manchester itself contribute to the evolution of engines? Was it also a source of these technologies? Because of the booming cotton industry, there was a real demand for textile machinery. Um, so you'd get companies like Platt Brothers in Oldham, um, who really specialised in, in making that textile machinery, really cutting edge, sort of pioneering stuff. You'd also have kind of surrounding industries. So you'd have the, um, the engineers like Galloway's and Sons Limited who would have made um, steam engines that powered the cotton industry um, and also things like boilers, so the big steam boilers that produce the steam to go in the engines to power the machines. So it was like a whole um, ecosystem of different stuff that was required. Seeing the progress from water wheels to static steam engines like those in the hall behind us as we speak is fascinating enough, but at the other end of the hall, there's a whole other chapter to explore. In 1830, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway opened, establishing the first proper railway service powered completely by mobile steam engines. Or to put it a better way, steam locomotives. For a short period before other passenger stations opened elsewhere in the city, passengers were brought here to Liverpool Road, what is today part of the museum sites and also currently undergoing renovations. 
Within 20 years of the opening, Manchester was producing its own locomotives, with huge companies like Bayer Peacock manufacturing hundreds in sprawling sites across the city. Quite soon, really, they were sort of use it, utilising the trade networks of the British Empire and exporting locomotives to places like South Africa and South America. Yeah, and you've got a couple of those engines in, haven't you? There's a, one from South Africa. Yeah, well, it's a really memorable one, that. Yeah, it's like the biggest object we've got in our whole collection, our Bayer Garrett locomotive. So, um, yeah, that was um, made by Bayer Peacock um, in 1929 and exported to South Africa. And it's, um, it's an articulated type of locomotive, the Bayer Garrett, and it means that it can kind of um, steer around tighter corners and go up, steeper in, up and down steeper inclines. Amongst all of this manufacturing were, Manchester also utilised a different form of power in a big way, becoming known as Hydraulic City. But hydraulic power isn't something most people generally think about or even associate with Victorian Britain. So how was it used? Manchester's hydraulic power story is quite fun. It's, um, it's quite, um, it's not many people have heard of it, so it's quite exciting. So from uh, 1894 through to 1972, amazingly, uh, Manchester actually had a hydraulic power system. So you'd have power stations, there were three in Manchester, um, that would pump the water up to really high pressure. And then through like really thick cast iron pipes, that would, it was 35 miles worth of hydraulic pipes under the streets of Manchester at its peak. Um, and then that would deliver that high pressure water to businesses all over the city. Um, so Manchester was perfect for hydraulic power for things like, because uh, it's great for intermittent uses. So if you don't need to have a steam engine chugging away all the time, you just want to do something intermittently like, um, like squeezing cotton into a bale or fabric into a, into a small package or um, lifting stuff in a warehouse. Obviously it was happening a lot in, uh, happening a lot in Manchester. Um, but also it had some quite quirky uses in Manchester, so it was used for things like um, winding the town hall clock and um, also raising the safety curtain at the Palace Theatre. Um, so those kind of like, where you just need an occasional um, use and also um, in hotels, passenger lifts for people going up and down to the different floors. Yeah, of course. And you've got an example of a hydraulic uh, machine here, haven't you? Yeah, we've got, um, we've got a hydraulic um, uh, pumping engine which was actually from the pump house um, that's now the People's History Museum. So uh, oh, if people know that, that's, that was actually yeah. the building where our hydraulic engine would have worked. The next step in power production, of course, was the transformation of that steam-induced movement into electricity, which, like the hydraulic power, could be centralised and delivered on demand. Electricity, of course, was a huge leap forward, not just for industry, but for society in general. It now became easier and cheaper to light up houses and streetlights. And a flurry of electrically powered consumables for the home raised the standard of living. Manchester's electrically powered on-street tram network also enabled the growth of the suburbs, the commuter belts and shopping high streets. Electrical power was produced off-site, away from homes and industries and at larger centralised power stations on the edge of communities. And that was a good thing because it meant that everybody didn't need to have an engine in their home, like this humongous Ferranti-made steam engine fitted not with a flywheel but with an alternator. Imagine having to squeeze past this in your living room. So we're in the power hall at the Science and Industry Museum. What's been going on? It's been closed for so long. Yeah, it's really exciting to uh, welcome you back into the Power Hall. Um, yeah, it feels like ages that we've been closed, but um, it's amazing to reopen. For one thing, um, we needed to make some uh, repairs to the building. So we've uh, sort of completely redone the roof um, and we've kind of been able to reinstate some more of the uh, historical features of the building. So like the platform through the middle of the building, um, some of the features of the roof are, are sort of improved and more like how they would have been originally. Um, then there was um, a, a whole effort to decarbonise our operations here at the museum. Um, so um, power hall's a huge part of that. We've got um, a new electric steam boiler, which provides the steam for our steam engines. Um, we've also fitted in um, water source heat pumps, which are fed by an aquifer deep underground in the museum. Oh, amazing. Um, so together that's allowed us to really reduce our carbon emissions um, and make it a much sort of uh, greener operation, uh, running the sort of it's amazing because the engines originally would have all run on fossil fuels and now we've been able to really reduce the amount of carbon. Yeah. So what would be the highlights for you if you were to show somebody around, what would you immediately show them? Most of us think, 
Um, my highlights, absolutely the working engines. Um, so I think it's it was sort of the always the heart of the power hall. So when people um, like us remember coming as kids, you always remember seeing stuff moving, um, seeing the engines running, um, and that'll be back. So when visitors come back into power hall, they'll once again be able to stuff move, see stuff oh. moving, and also they'll see the um, our team doing that work. So when people are doing maintenance work or conservation work. Um, on the engines, that'll be really visible for people to see. Yeah, because when I used to come in here as a kid, that was what I really liked. It felt hands-on, even though it t it really it wasn't quite hands-on. It felt like a working <laughs> building with machines that move. Yeah. Um, and I can see when you've got the static engines over there, and you've got the locomotives on this side, you can see that it's still very much that kind of spirit. It's... Yeah, definitely. It's like it makes it a really sensory experience. So a lot of the time, what people remember is the smells, the smell of oil, yeah. the smell of steam, it's kind of oil. a unique sort yeah. of smell, and the sounds. So you can hear the, the kind of clanking of the steam engines, and I, I, I remember that from being here as a kid as well. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people really fondly remember that. So, final, final question: You're the curator of the power hall here. What is it you love about engines and power and electricity? What what draws you to that? Oh, good question. What gets you excited about? <laughs> I guess it's like it's partly because of like visiting um, like um, visiting places like this when I was a kid. Like my dad brought us to sort of museums and galleries and, and stuff like that. Um, and I guess I really liked seeing all the moving parts and like we were saying about like the sort of sensory experience, like the sort of smells and atmosphere. Um, also, um, he had a, a really lovely garage at home where he was always tinkering and it's that sort of like smell of smell of oil and smell of petrol, smell of engines. I guess it's just a really like a, a really happy smell to me. It's like a really like quite, quite sort of nostalgic. Yeah. Um, and that's that's part of what I've always loved about Power Hall. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm so, so glad that Power Hall is back. And honestly, this museum is one of the best things in Manchester. Not just for a history nerd like me, but for anybody, really. It's fun and interactive and exciting. And like Sarah said, that faint smell of oil, for example, just takes you back to being a kid and it's just wonderful. Yeah, it's just a very, very exciting, exciting place to be. And it gives you a real insight into the, the beating heart of Manchester. It's so different to the sanitised streets outside, which are lovely, but it takes you back to that beating heart of the Industrial Revolution here in Manchester. And I just wish there were more places like this in the city centre for us to experience that.